we got the Focal Canta N2 review you guys have been waiting for. You've been asking us where it is. Here it is. That's what we're gonna be talking about in today's video. Hey folks, I'm Gene Della Sala with Audioholics. We're here with Don, Don, get her done, Don, from Haven Smart. Haven Smart. So what do you wanna talk about with these awesome speakers we've been listening to for what, 10 years now? <laughs> <laughs> it seems like it. We've actually demoed these speakers in a multitude of rooms because that's what we do at Audioholics. We just don't measure a speaker, listen to it in one area like some people might do. We actually listen to our speakers in multiple environments and the speaker's no different. Um, multiple electronics too. One electronics as well, multiple electronics. We've had the, the Parasound JC5, um, we've had the Yamaha 5200, your, what Anthem? The Anthem STR separates. Right, yeah. and now the um, NAD T778. So we've tried this with a multitude of electronics to really ring these speakers out and see how they sound in real world environments because every room's a little bit different. Mm -hmm. um, I gotta tell you, this is one of my favorite speakers of all time fantastic speaker in, in so many ways. Yeah, the thing that really impresses me about the Focals is you look at them and they look, they're kind of small, they're not a big speaker for a tower. You would think you're just not gonna get that much output out of a speaker like this, especially with six and a half inch drivers, but man, did these things like just knock it out, they knock you in the chest with output, clean output. Mm -hmm. And I wanna talk a little bit about the driver technology, but I also wanna mention the fact that all the electronics we paired with these speakers really made them shine. I mean, the Anthem STR separates is obviously the cream of the crop of mm -hmm. all the electronics that we powered these speakers with in the mm -hmm. Audioholic Smart House. But we've got some great electronics in here. This NAD uh, receiver is really good. We listen to these speakers in my office, which is not an ideal acoustical environment. Well, and they, not yet, it will be. It, we're working on it, I'm building a wall in there, but even without the good acoustics in that room and not having the greatest bass response, these speakers really sounded, I would say a little bit forward of neutral. Slightly forward of Slightly neutral. forward of neutral. Well, little, little, little they, bright. They, they were a little, a little bit bright. bright. They were a little bit bright. They're not really bright. <laughs> a little bit forward of neutral. Um, it gives you a very forward presentation and, and to me, is a very accurate pre uh, presentation. And that that's all, all across the Focal line from the architectural stuff that we have in here um, yeah, to, the, the, to the Area series. series, the Cora series, all the way up to the Sopras and some of the ones that I've heard and listened to. Um, the Canta 2 is kind of smack dab in the middle of the Focal line. It represents a, a really a true step into ultra high-end audio. Now they're at $11,000 a pair. Not an inexpensive speaker. Um, and you say that they're kind of small, um, maybe next to my large self, but they're actually not that small. They're 44 inches tall. They're 12 inches wide and 18 inches deep. So they're a substantial speaker. They're just not as tall and thin as some of the other speakers out there. They're well, not small, but their footprint's very small in the room. And also our frame of reference is a bit skewed when I have seven or eight foot towers oh, yeah. in, my, in my theater room and we had the JTRs in which were yeah. giant as well. So yes, these the great thing about these speakers is they're not a huge speaker, but more importantly, they blend into any room decor. And as you guys can see in this B-roll footage, footage that we're showing you, the finish and the Amazing. craftsmanship of the speaker, and I don't want to sound like a fanboy, but when you look at these things in, uh, in, in person and you see how they look and how they're contoured and just the craftsmanship of it, right, uh, they're, they're like a, a work of art or a fine piece of furniture. I, most people that have come in and into your house, and I brought them to my house for a while and listened to them, have all noted like, wow, well, those are amazing, those are beautiful. Now these are in the uh, Carrera, which is a Porsche color, a Carrera white. Um, the, they don't dominate a room. But I gotta tell you, the output, especially if you pair these with a subwoofer, is substantial. They're very dynamic speaker. Uh, you know, kudos to Focal for making um, drivers specifically made for each speaker in their entire line. So when you have a flax driver speaker in an Aria, or even within the Aria line, they're different in each speaker. They're tuned and built specifically for the speaker. And in the case of the Cantas, they have large magnet structures and some cool technology that we'll post up a little later on these speakers that really differentiate uh, them. They make the Canta number twos, which have two six and a half inch bass drivers, 
a six and a half inch mid range, and um, Focal's latest beryllium tweeter. Now, some beryllium, people, beryllium, murder. Some people might <laughs> might not realize <laughs> Focal actually has patents on beryllium being used in tweeters that allows them to make a thinner, finer beryllium tweeter than any other company. Therefore, I think they're probably the finest sound of beryllium tweeter that I've heard, or one of the finest that I've heard. Um, the fit and finish in the entire Focal line, that's something that we really know. We had listened to some of their stuff before, demoed it, heard it at a lot of shows, but until we really started receiving products to review from Focal, specifically their headphones, their architectural stuff, every single product that they sent us was just incredibly well-crafted. Their, their headphones are like a piece of jewelry. Yeah. I mean, you'd say that. Um, very, very impressive speaker. Some things without getting too much of an audio uh, into the audiophile nomenclature that people like to get into. The sound stage of these speakers is phenomenal. When properly placed in a room, and they are pretty easy to place, the sound stage is phenomenal. It's very wide, it's very deep. Um, they're very articulate speakers, meaning they're fast, and when you're listening to a multitude of different types of music, especially rock. I know a lot of speakers struggle with like heavy metal or rock. These kind of come into their own on that. Um, I would say they're relatively forgiving too, being that they're a little forward and neutral. Um, a multitude of different kinds of music were listened to on these. Everything sounded exceptional. One thing of note, I will say that the bass output from these speakers, especially when they're placed, I would say two to three feet away from a wall, it kind of increases. It, it's unbelievable. It almost defies what two, six and a half should do. Well, that's the interesting thing is we're in this room here, which is what, about 12 foot by 15 foot? This room's uh, 16 and a half foot by 14 foot. Okay, so it's a pretty decent sized room. And Don, originally when we were listening, he had them cross over at like 40 hertz to these two very capable SVS subs here. And I'm like, you know what, this sounds great, but let's listen to them full range, right. turn the subs off. And to be honest with you, <laughs> the subs weren't needed for the music yeah. because it was very satisfying. The integration between the bass, mids, and the highs was pretty much perfect on the speaker. Mm -hmm. If you're a real two-channel aficionado, most you likely you won't need to add a sub, but if you do want to add a sub, you're going to probably cross it over very low just to get the really deep bass that you're not getting, maybe the last or, half off. Or octave. the Canta 3s, which have dual 8s. Right. which are a little bit bigger. If you're gonna do just the speakers alone, I think in a room this size or even or smaller, or even maybe a little bit bigger, because for a while I had them in my main listening room, it's substantial bass output. It's enough to please most people, especially some of our European and Asian people that don't necessarily, the, the markets that listen to, um, not huge on the bass like us Americans, we like our bass. But adding a subwoofer to these in the center channel and rears, now you have a, a really high performance two channel system that'll also give you the digs on surround sound. So part of what Don was talking about, that the speakers are fast and articulate, I think some of that has to do with the cone material geometry that they're mm -hmm. using, the flax the, drivers. The flax driver, which is a unique um, material that Focal actually manufactures in France. And it really has a lot of great properties. It's kind of fast, it's very stiff, but it's fast like paper. Yeah, it's so, light I mean, and efficient. Yeah, I, you know, I like it, it's similar to Kevlar, maybe even a little bit faster. The interesting thing is these speakers, um, they have a pretty high sensitivity rating and they don't need a lot of power to fill a room. And this receiver, this NAD receiver is what, 140 a channel? Yeah, 140 a channel is rated at. Um, it's a Class D amplifier hybrid. Yeah. It's actually a very, it's probably one of the best, if not the best sounding modern AV receivers that I've ever heard. Mm -hmm. I mean, and it's not very big, it's a small footprint. And it's a more neutral warm sound, so it pairs good with the, with the Focals. I thought the Parasound JC5 paired very good with them. Um, the anthem that you had it on was phenomenal. So, yeah, yeah, excellent. So, if you want to talk about some of the negatives of the speaker, I guess one would be it's you're paying a pretty high admission price to get basically furniture grade speaker mm -hmm. that sounds great. I mean, that's the one negative I would say. The other negative is you can't buy amplifier or buy wire room. There's single amp connection. So, what I would recommend if you're considering these speakers is just get the best high quality two channel amp that you can get. And just be happy with the fact that you got a speaker that is just so well integrated that you don't have to go and mix and match mm -hmm. amplifiers for the <clears throat> tweeter and mid versus the bass section. It just works great on one amp connection. Yeah, of note, this is a speaker that you can run with a better quality AV receiver and then build your way up to a higher end amplifier, um, two channel amp, a multi channel amp. It will exploit a higher end chain of electronics 
or even a mid, mid level or mid to low level chain of electronics and still give you phenomenal sound. It's a relatively e easy speaker to drive. I'm not saying it's a 92 dB horn or 99 dB horn, but it's relatively efficient. Um, very energetic speaker, a lot of, a lot of energy and output. It is pricey. I mean, $11,000, let's face it. In the world, the audiophile world, that's not maybe necessarily that much. Mm -hmm. But in today's market, there's a very um, broad amount of speakers that are competitive in that price range. However, very, spe very few speakers combine the aesthetics, the build quality, the performance, um, and the ability not to have your wife kill you when you put them into a room. Shockingly dynamic. Um, really took a lot for them to even think they were... I never got them to compress. And I played them at 110 dB levels on, on home theater. Uh, the center channel matches up very, very nice with them. It's very dynamic, very clean, a very cohesive system if you use them with their architectural. Mm -hmm. Like I have the, th we have the 300 series architectural set up in here with the flex drivers. They'll also match up nice with the Beryllium 1000 series that Focal has. I just can't, I don't think you could go wrong with this product. And we're, we're, we're uh, big fans of them here at Audioholics. All right, so Don, I wanna keep this whole sensitivity thing into perspective. Yes, this speaker is not like a giant Klipsch horn with 95, 100 dB sensitivity, but 91 dB sensitivity at 2.83 volts on a dynamic speaker like this without a horn, that's really impressive. And, that, and the fact that these things can play as loud as we heard them play without compressing is, means that you can use a modest amplifier and still get very good right. sound quality out of them. And, um, I'm also happy with the bass extension for a speaker that doesn't have big drivers. They rate it at 35 hertz all the way to 40 kilohertz. Those are the 3 dB points. That's a pretty wide dynamic range, wide frequency response. That's a full range speaker. speaker for sure. Yeah. So again, if you're gonna pair this with a subwoofer, we recommend you choose a very high quality subwoofer. Look at our reviews on AudioHawks. We do the group delay measurements. We show you which subwoofers have good musical capability. And that's the kind of sub you wanna pair with these speakers. Yeah, we speakers. paired these with, um... JL Audio 12s, e SVS 13 yep. and a half, so the, the um, SB 3000s, all the way up to the RTJ 18 inch subs. And, and they, they hung right with them, it was really, really great. So the last thing I wanna talk about is when we unboxed these speakers, which feels like 10 years ago, cause we've been having- uh, It was more like a year. Yeah, yeah but, but yeah. We, you know, we've been enjoying these speakers. When we unboxed them, I was impressed. This is the first speaker I came across that had the outrigger system already mounted and assembled into the speaker. And I thought that was- Solidly too. Very solidly. Very impressive, the craftsmanship of that and the fact that you don't have to go and buy a separate um, system to, to basically decouple the yeah. speaker from the it, floor. It's a magnetic and aluminum uh, composite material that they put on them. So they're, they're fantastic. In fact, I'm gonna reach out to ISO Acoustics and see if we can get a couple sets of the the Gaia feet for those to sit on, because um, I, I, I've heard them and they, they make us, it's not snake oil, they make a difference, I've heard it, so. Well, just keep things into perspective. He believes in UFOs. I know there's UFOs, I saw one. Right. So whatever, don't be a jerk. <laughs> so. Anyways, guys, so, you know, thinking about the speaker again, just to wrap it up, it's a beautifully crafted product that sounds great. Uh, I can't really say anything negative about it other than the fact that it's gonna set you back a couple of bucks, but you know, yeah. it's, you never been, it. it's never been cheap to be hip and trendy. <laughs> so uh, these, of a note, I, I would say that these speakers will satisfy almost any audiophile into a medium to fairly large size room with good amplification up to great amplification, great cables, great setup. Um, whatever chain you wanna to put to them, they're, they're, they're gonna deliver the goods to you. And they look cool, so if you got a cool sound room, some cool posters and artwork and acoustic treatments on it, they're kind of funky. They're, they're cool and they look great. Or if you want to put them in a family room system, get the matching center channel, uh, some rears to match, maybe some architectural speakers. You can use the, like I said, the 300 series or the 1000 series. Make a very, very strong case for a, for a high performance, both audio and surround sound system, especially if you're listening to Atmos, Atmos music that we're really, really mm -hmm. uh, amped up on. Even if you like Oro 3D, you can still, they'll still deliver the goods. Yeah, two um, or three songs you can get in for sure. <laughs> and, and two movies. But it, it's a, absolutely a, a wonderful product. I, I, I gotta tell you, it's one of my favorite speakers that I've been around and reviewed. When you take all the things into consideration at what it gives you, sure there's gonna be people out there going, you get more value here and you get more of this and that. This is a work, they're works of art. They're beautiful. 
uh, they're like a piece of furniture. High they wife play, acceptance. Yeah, factor. high wife acceptance factor. They play loud, they're clean. Focal does not screw around. They make a great product from top to bottom. And, and this, this, this represents the platform to diminishing returns. Yes, the Sopras outperform the Cantas, and obviously the, the Utopias outperform those, but we're not talking about giant margins. An entry level speaker, this is a giant margin. This is a big and substantial step up in the audio world. Highly recommend it if you have the money to spend on them. So I think the next follow up is gonna be, we'll have Matthew Pose come out here. We'll take these speakers outside. We'll do a full barrage of measurements because I know right. you guys wanna see measurements. And we just gotta hope Matthew doesn't <clears throat> damage him. He's not gonna damage him, I'm yeah. gonna break his neck. But, <laughs> so, no offense Matthew. But listen, uh, these speakers, <clears throat> we're gonna get all the measurements on them. We wanted to emphasize how many different rooms. We've had these in what, four different rooms? Yeah. We've had them in four separate sound rooms, acoustic, fully acoustically treated. We put them in your theater for a while, which is huge. Mm -hmm. That's 25 by 20. We had them in, in a fam two different family rooms. My family room slash theater in, in this bedroom at, at your place that we have them in. And they absolutely performed great. Um, they were easy to place. Um, definitely perform better when you get them three feet or so off the wall, you get a little bit more bass. But here, we kind of have to push them up a little closer the way the room and the door is and everything. Still, no, no complaints about them. Highly recommended. Well, great, Don. Thanks for your perspective. Guys, if you like this video, please thumb it up. Please share it. Subscribe. Don't forget about our Patreon channel at patreon.com slash audiohawks. We appreciate your support. You get direct access to me if you want to suggest video topics or, you know, you just want to support the channel. If you want to hear about Don's UFO stories, we'll have them on our channel. Do, 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 do. <laughs> there you go. All right, guys. Well, until next time, my friends, keep listening. They're out there.